Good evening from Del Rio, Texas. We're like three miles from the Mexican border. If I look out the window in my hotel, I'm, I'm certain that I can see Mexico. Um, we uh, wrote here today from a town that really wasn't a town. We stayed in a ranch house last night, um, basically a hunting house, and um, really wasn't in a town. It was like a house in the middle of nowhere. And um, the first town we passed through was 30 miles away, Brackettsville. And we were told by a friend that there was a replica of the Alamo there that was used in a film starring like uh, Billy Bob Thornton and some other people. We didn't see it though. Um, as we got closer to Del Rio, we saw two things. Uh, Laughlin Air Force Base and lots and lots of Border Patrol cars. Um, we also saw uh, some amazing deer. We saw, Rick and I saw three deer come across the road and jump over a fence that was six or seven feet high. It was pretty stunning to see these dudes like just zoom over this fence. Wait, let me see if I can get my finger to do this. Zoomed over the fence like that, yeah. It was beautiful. Um, sadly, the big thing here in Texas, of course, is to shoot deer, but you know, we're not into that stuff today. Um, well, it's Halloween. Happy Halloween. Um, I've been up and down all day. Um, just thinking how excited Pablo was to um, trick or treat last year. And it was, a, it was a big question as to whether we were going to be able to trick or treat based on his white blood cell count. Um, white blood cells being the thing the, the, the things in your body that keep you from getting infections and, and keep your body safe. Um, and if his numbers hadn't been high enough, we wouldn't um, have been able to go. Turned out that everything uh, was okay. He dressed as a robot. If you look on the Poblog, I put photos up from our um, excursion last year. And, um, you know, we didn't know at that time that it might be Pablo's last Halloween. In fact, at that time, we had absolutely no inclination that that would ever be the case. We just were plowing forward. We were happy. We, were, um, we weren't delusional. We knew that our son was being treated for cancer and that anything could happen. But at that time, we were just in the fight. i um, been thinking a lot about Pablo today. Of course I have been. I think about him every day. I've uh, been thinking a lot about him in his costume and um, in all the costumes that he wore over the years. And um, when I just inhale and exhale, I just, I feel Pablo in the acceptance. And of course I look at the photos and I cry and um, found myself listening to music that makes me cry today. Um, it works for me. And um, lots and lots of people uh, for the past two weeks have been telling me how they feel Pablo in their lives. And that's comforting to me. And it, these are stories that I like to hear um, as long as they're positive in nature. And all of them have been. Um, our friend Tracy took um, her two kids, Cassie and Olivia, up to Pablo's grave today and they they read some spooky stories and they ate candy corn and they left some candy corn for him. And um, Cassiel was one of Pablo's best friends, just an amazing little boy. Um, Tracy and her husband Michael um, worked with uh, with uh, an associate of theirs to make the, um, the the moving graphic that plays at the beginning and end of the uh, Pablo of Across America videos. The ones that Mike makes have those. Mine, I'm good enough to like shoot this thing on my laptop and upload it, and that's about it. But I um, wanted to point out that connection to you. Those, those, uh, those connections are important to me because they, they underline the sense of community that we have here at, um, at Pablo. Um, I've been holding this girl's um, dedication 
for a while, and it's because um, of two reasons. One, I wanted to dedicate our evening to her on a special night, Halloween to special night. I wanted to practice saying her name because it's, for me, a tricky name to pronounce. And I'm going to look at the side of the screen here, and I'm going to pronounce her name. Her name is Lowry, Lowry, I'm sorry, Lowry, Elizabeth Van Der Werf. If I got that wrong, I apologize. Um, she was diagnosed with Wilms tumor in 2001, and she passed away on September 23rd, 2002, um, from Auckland, New Zealand. Um, and tonight, all the way across the world, we dedicate our evening hours to her. Tonight is the uh, end of Daylight Savings Time here in America, in the states that celebrate this great tradition. Um, we're excited out here on the road because it means we get an hour time bonus. It means that we can sleep for an hour longer. The joke uh, that Rick and I were saying today is that we're still going to wake up on the old time anyway because at this point we're like um, we're machines. Um, we are excited to be riding into Marfa, Texas tomorrow. Um, I'm going to go up to see our nephew Alex, who's at boarding school about 20 miles from there. Marfa is an amazing place. Uh, it's literally a one-horse town in the middle of nowhere, and a bunch of films have been made there or, or partially shot there. Going back to Giant, James Dean's last film, uh, No Country for Old Men, Brokeback Mountain. Um, we are, um, some of us are staying at a, at a hotel um, a friend of ours who is uh, a cyclist who is best known as the uh, two-time winner of the Delfina Libre uh, bike race has uh, given us the keys to his place there. So uh, it has two bedrooms, so a couple of us will stay over there and, uh, and save dough. And we have a day off there on Monday, so we're excited to check out the art and culture that goes on in Marfa. It's, it's a really big artist um, retreat and refuge. So, uh, I will turn you back over to your life now. Lowry, you are in our hearts. Um, we're sending our love from all over America, all over Europe, all over the world to you and Auckland, New Zealand, and your family and your friends. And um, we'll see you all in the morning.